What's up guys, what's going on? Welcome to our GH Tech TV and today let's see some basic to advanced tips and tricks, features, customizations, shortcuts and much more on Lenovo's Vibe K5 Plus. So all you have to do is sit back, relax and watch this video till the end. Under display settings you can enable or disable VR split screen mode. To access this feature, you can long press the power button and select the VR split screen mode so that you can see the normal 2D content in a VR headset. To get back to normal mode, you can again long press the power button and then select the VR split screen mode. Under battery settings, you can enable battery saver from the top right corner. You can turn it on automatically when the battery is 5% or 15% or you can also manually turn it on or off so that by the end of the day, you can get extra bit of battery life which surely comes in handy. You also have scheduled power on and off wherein you can control at what particular time the device shuts down or powers on automatically. Under accessibility, you can enable power button to end calls. You do have color inversion, color correction, high contrast text, which are still experimental in nature. Under accessibility itself, you can enable magnification gestures. That is, you can triple tap on the screen to magnify it and you can use the single finger to swipe between the pages and use two fingers to navigate in the same page. Now if you notice YBUI does not have application tray. All the applications will reside on the home screen. For the application tray and to get the stock Android experience, you can install the Google Now Launcher and it works perfectly fine. You can capture the screenshots from the shortcut provided in the quick toggles or else press the power button and the volume down button at the same time and this can be accessed from the notification tray or the gallery. Under display settings itself you can adjust the font size from small to huge so if you have readability issues then this will be helpful. Under display settings itself you have the option to cast the screen onto bigger displays like TV. Under notification center under app notifications you can block the notifications for any particular application or set priority so that notifications for that applications will be shown on the top. This is super useful guys. If you feel that any application is consuming a lot of memory, then head on to the background application management and select the application so that it won't turn on automatically in the background, which will indeed save memory and battery life. Now by default, some applications can access your call log, SMS, camera, microphone, etc. And if you feel that it's not appropriate, then head on to the permission control wherein you can enable or disable those permissions. Now this gives you power to monitor and control what applications can access what content in your phone and which in my opinion is a very good thing. You can press and hold on the multitasking buttons to access the recently used applications and you can single tap on the multitasking button to change the wallpapers, widgets, preferences, etc. Under preferences under home screen settings, you can enable or disable transition effects for home screen, wallpaper scrolling and also auto arrange icons from left top corner. You can single swipe to get the notification tray, swipe again to get the quick toggles or else you can use two fingers directly to go to quick toggles. You can press and hold on the home button to access the Google Now which gives you cards like temperature, sports, stock etc. USB OTG is supported so you can connect your pen drive and seamlessly access your content be it movies, pictures or any other media files. So that's it guys. If you feel this video was informative, give it a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and most importantly, thanks for watching.